What's up, Simmers Alert? TJR Sim here. Today, I want to talk about the Sim Magic DS8X shifter. This is the H pattern shifter slash sequential dual mode uh, shifter. So, been rocking this for a couple weeks now. I've actually really been enjoying this. So, let's let's dig in further and see what I found. All right. All right. So, I want to talk about the pros, the cons, and some observations that I found on this shifter here. Uh, of course, the build quality as well will all, all be lumped in there between those uh, two sections there. So let me put the camera here on the actual shifter itself because the photo of me is not that important here. So here we got on the screen the software for the uh, SimPro Manager. Uh, and then, of course, obviously the H pattern shifter here. A little floppy flop. <laughs> but honestly, though, the, the build quality, I just want to talk about the build quality. It's actually really top-notch. It is, is a really just... A nice robust hunk of hunk of hunk of aluminum here, man. <laughs> so I do like it. I do love that it has the uh, features of the sequential and the H pattern uh, mode here, easily to switch. A la just fanatic is what it reminds me of, where they had a, a a slider from forward to backwards, where this is just a switch up and down. Now I normally rock this further up forward on my rig than I have here, but for this demonstration with the video that I'll be playing here in the background as well. This way I can easily rock it between the two here because my sequential shifter is slightly in the way. I don't use this one as a sequential shifter. I use the Q1 here, much better uh, sequential shifter, but I'll get into that here in a little bit as well. This is definitely a professional looking device here, an H pattern shifter. It doesn't feel like a toy, except when you do this. Then <laughs> that and it feels like a toy. But other than that, it's what we have here is eight speeds. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth, and then you pull up, that's the seventh, and then just slide back down. You can hold it in or not, but if you have it in seventh, you can just go back to eight. You don't have to hold this. And then back in the neutral, then if you need to lock out reverse like that, it reminds me of uh, a Subaru w WRX uh, in this manner, which I love that feature. It's just really cool to have that uh, lockout like that though. I think they could have did some improvement here with some uh, with some aesthetics there. If they would have used their their anodized red that they use here on this piece, although I think is that feels like metal actually, uh, that would have been awesome. At least just maybe this rim here across the top, you know, would have been uh, nice anodized. Although you would have to do this whole shaft here, but either way, that would have been uh, that would have kicked it off. I'm surprised it's just all stealth black here, which I do like the murder black out here. It's, it's pretty cool, but. I uh, would love to see a little bit of a, a hint of red here, just like you do everywhere else on the Sim Magic. So, now, full shift sequential pattern, like I said. So, you got the H pattern shifter here, and then you can flip it down to sequential. And then, of course, you can see the software switch as well forward, backward. Now, I have it adjusted here to where it works both sequential and H pattern without making any adjustments. But here is an adjustment screw here. I normally rock this all the way in uh, for H pattern mode because it's just too too light for me, for my liking. So I want it as hard as possible. I could actually stand it to be even stiffer, but in reality though, this is this works really good rocked in uh, as far as how the H pattern uh, works. But it's, uh, it, it's decent resistance here. It's not like my Q1. SQ1 is of course much louder as you can tell, uh, as you can tell here. And the brackets here, I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the brackets here as well here in a second. As you can see that this one kind of rocks rocks more the way it is. But with that, if you look up here at the top of the screen, you'll see that it, when I push forward, it's going up through gears. And then down, it's going down through gears, right? So you're, normally when you're racing and sim racing, you're grabbing gear, going, pulling towards you, and you're downshifting it by bumping it forward. Now, actually, some real cars that you drive, road cars, that is, are set up exactly like this. So if you like this uh, configuration, good. There you go. You have it. But if you like uh, the uh, traditional racing style configuration, you can just click on this invert uh, shift right here, and boom, you can see as it's on screen, it is going up through the gears by pulling to you, down, reverse, right? So good stuff. And then sync with paddles. This actually will sync with the paddles as well. So if I get my paddle shifters here, which you can't really see in view, You'll see that obviously it does the same thing, right? Good stuff. All right, so let's talk about the the adjustment tension here real quick. So I said is about as tight as you can get it for the sequential shifter, which has a pretty good resistance. I don't have a uh, a pull gauge here to 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 measure this resistance. Maybe someone on the internet's already done this before, but it has a nice positive feedback. It has no 
see the wiggle right there, right? It has a little bit of wiggle side by side, but this is nothing that you would actually notice. And this would be normal for any road cars as well. Uh, so you have a little bit of it uh, there as well. Now where the sequential, nothing wobbles. What you see is the actual bracket down here wobbles. But if you were to hold it, there's no side to side slack. Like again, again, it's just the bracket down there at the bottom that, that is uh, rocking back and forth. So if you ever have this hard mount it here, like I normally do, you wouldn't see that at all. So this has a little bit of play, not a big deal. I'm picky, right? So, but in play, you never notice it. Now, when you're grabbing gears, what I do notice here uh, at the hardest setting for the sequential is that you tend to get this, this feedback, right? This bounce back. Uh, so when you are pushing forward and you let go, it, it, it pushes your hand back. And you, again, of course, when you're grabbing gears up through gears, it's going to bounce against your fingers as well. You can minimize it and just hold it and let, let it glide back and forth as well. Let it push your hands off either way. Uh, that is cool too, but just something, you know, just giving you the observations that I'm seeing here. You grab the SQ1 here, you don't get any bounce, get the bounce, it pulls back, but it's not bouncy. It's not reverbing back and forth, right? It's, it's just solid, positive shifts, very mechanical feeling with the Q1. You feel like you are pushing something metal in here, which you are actually a dial. Check out my review on this one already. Uh, and some of the issues I've had with this as well, but they're all solved now. But uh, you can, uh, you feel very mechanical feeling with this one. With this one, it feels, let's say, semi-mechanical. Not exactly mechanical, but uh, it has a, a softness to it, rather. Which is it's fine, I guess. It just depends on what you like here. This is much quieter, of course. So if, if a loudness is a concern, you'd probably like this one a little bit more. Now, if, if uh, space on your rig is a concern, this would be the way to go because you have an H pattern shifter and a sequential as well. But if you're not someone that uses H pattern at all, then you wouldn't even look at this uh, device at all anyways. But then why are you here watching the video? Because you're interested in H pattern. That's why. <laughs> all right. So back to the shifter here now. So I have this all the way in as far as I can. If I were to pump this in further, you can see that the it'll stay just locked in to its position, right? Now, H pattern. Well, let me go back out a little bit here. So see if I can go into it a little bit. Oh, there we go. So that's as tight as I can get uh, for, each, for uh, sequential mode. But when I go up to H pattern mode, that feels pretty good, actually. It has a good engagement to it. Of course, you can see on screen everything that's going through the gears, reverse, seventh, eighth, right? Uh, and then, of course, you have this bounce back here. But you don't have it in a real car, right? In a real car, when you're grabbing gears and you pop it back into neutral, you tend to do this on your own because there's friction between, between these two settings. So that's the only thing I like about the H pattern shifter itself, but that's inherent because of the way the springs are in here and you got to have the full travel across here as well. Now discuss now way I like it is I would like to dial this in all the way, which you can see it's quite a bit of a few turns, right? So I hit max, I back off just a, just a quarter of a thread right there. Uh, and then it, it increases the stiffness, of course, right? It, it feels a little bit stiffer in this regard uh, than it did before. Uh, this I like. I could stand for it to be more, I, actually. I don't know if I'm crazy, but sometimes it feels like when you adjust this thing, this was stiffer originally out of the box than it was later. But that, that may just be me getting so used to this here. But with the shifting mechanism the way it is, I actually really like it. It's, it's nice. It's very positive shifting. You feel like you are pushing into a gear, you're pushing this into a actual gear on a, tra a tranny. And then when you come out, you feel that lump of coming out of that gear back into neutral land here. And then when you grab second, you have that pushover again. So you do have that positive pushover, pulling it back out of that, that positive engagement into the neutral position and then, and then back into another gear. So when you're rolling through gears. Uh, it does feel, like it sounds, it feels very positive engaging. I like that. This, this is a really nice h band shifter. Now, uh, I think it would be comparative to the F Fanatic uh, shifter. I wouldn't recommend getting a Fanatic shifter. If you have one uh, and it's still working, fine. Really would be no reason to go to this shifter, I don't think, because you have something that gets the job done. This, to me, does feel a little bit more tension than the Fanatic. Now, I don't have the Fanatic here with me anymore. I sold it. And I actually went through three Fanatic uh, shifters and that's why H pattern shifters. That's why I wouldn't recommend them. It's because all three of them have broke on me. <laughs> 200 warranty and then one I just bought myself later on as well. But 
I literally broke the shaft off of one of them and the other ones, the hall sensor would get too dirty in there and uh, gum up, I guess, and just not work correctly. And this is with the new and improved V2 version, right? All three of them. But so I wouldn't recommend it just because longevity wise for that one doesn't work very well. Even though it does have a dust cover similar to this one as well, it just didn't last. Now this one, of course, we don't know how long it's going to last until we play with this through the years, but so far so good. Now again, of course, talking about the dust cover here, uh, like I just mentioned, this does have a nice dust cover here on there, as you can see in the camera, to keep a lot of your big uh, dust and debris out of there, right? <laughs> it's not like you're in windy conditions probably in your home, but normal dust, right? Uh, you're still going to get some in there, right? No matter what. Also, uh, I, w I did notice here, or you can see up on their website, I'll, I'll flash something up here though, but you have replaceable uh, gear knobs here, so you can unscrew this knob here and replace it with another one uh, based on the same thread pitch. I don't have the thread pitch handy looking at it right now, but they do have some nice carbon fiber collections as well, which I might get. Actually, any of these other shifters here too will fit on here, which I've put this one on here. I've put the long, long handle version on here. I don't like them for an actual uh, shifter, but if you wanted to use it for sequential, that is actually a nice, nice one for, for in sequential mode. Uh, so if you're someone that dabbles in dabbles in age pattern but mainly uses sequential this might be a good a good uh, option for you keep this knob for whenever you want to do age pattern and uh, get the long knob here for the for the actual sequential feature because it feels much much better more uh, more natural feeling uh, to have just a straight knob here uh, straight handle uh, but this one of course you know, rocks in your palm of your hand nice and easily to push it over much more comfortable to shift with. So I do like this shifter. The carbon fiber one is similar to this one, rounded up at the top, but it's more like a uh, like an oval as, as it comes up instead of not quite so round this year. All right, so that pretty much covers all the pros of this. Let's uh, talk a little bit deeper on the cons here before we move on to some observations I have. Alrighty, so here, let's get on to the cons. Actually, there's so many pros here that I already covered. There's not a lot of cons. I only actually have three cons on this puppy. So one is it would be, I, I prefer the more mechanical feel that you get out of this uh, sequential shifter. It would be nice if you were, I didn't take this apart to look at it though, but it doesn't have that metal to metal feel. It does, it does have somewhat that feel. Uh, it's hard to describe here, I guess. It's a, uh, it has a positive engagement. Like it's not gonna, there's no push past here, right? But it doesn't have that, that, well, it doesn't have that sound for one, but I don't care about the sound, but it doesn't have that mechanical engagement because you're not rotating a mechanical gear like you do on a sequential. But even when this is in sequential mode, it doesn't have quite the mechanical feel as this one does. So, but, that's all I would like. I would like to have a little bit more of a positive mechanical stop. Now I'm old school. So back in the day when I had my uh, Mustangs and, and uh, <laughs> Cobra Mustang and stuff, I would put a B&M ripper shifter on here or you'd have Hurst or whatever. I like B&M myself. But when you popped it into gear, it was a short shifter. So another thing is this is a little bit of a long shift for me. I would like half of this distance, like to there instead of to there, right? Um, but, you know, I'd imagine it's because of the pushover mechanism there that they have. I, again, I didn't take this apart to dig into it uh, because I just didn't, frankly, didn't want to. But anyway, I would like a little bit shorter shifter here. That would be awesome as well. But other than that, it's really good. The neutral position has no friction. I don't care for that at all. <laughs> That's just, when I first did the unboxing, I was like, oh, it's not bouncing back and forth. And, but once you have it mounted up here, it, it, it does have that, that uh, silly toy-like feature here the adjuster that's the other con the adjuster to max so once i go all the way max for for h pattern it's not going to work for sequential it would vice versa i can be maxed out on h pattern which is what i would prefer to do and i'd have to back it out a little bit for sequential so if you're going to use this as dual purpose you probably will find the same way you probably will want to have this maxed out or you'll just live with the way it is uh and, and rock with the sequential so you can just easily switch back and forth now, being that uh, the uh, oh, I did forget to mention one thing on the positive. Sorry about that. Uh, this you can hook to the CAN bus, so there's a USB CAN bus device here that you can get. You can plug all of these into, and it's recognized as one device. Now, that that is positive because that means you can easily switch between your your paddle shifters, your H pattern shifter, 
or to sequential mode and uh, on the fly while you're in game and everything's recognized, right? So, okay, back to the cons. <laughs> the other con doesn't necessarily have to do with this actual shifter, but it's the mounting brackets. Now, if you mount this up to 8020 rig, it is amazing. It's very solid, uh, doesn't move at all. Uh, it, it's like a rock. Now, if you were to mount it up to the bracket, which I'll show you here, here's the bracket. If you were to mount it up to this bracket, especially the H, H pattern shifter bracket here, it is too thin, as you can see, it's way too thin. Also on these brackets, I, I don't recommend these brackets at all, but when you mount this up to your rig for 8020 here, so you can see these two slots here, these don't exactly line up, let's say the top one lines up with the, the top slot, but this bottom one isn't spaced properly for the bottom here. Uh, so you have to rock it a little bit. So you end up using a, a screw down here to be able to fit between the two slots, which it does cant it a little bit, which is okay, works fine for my sequential shifter, but for this one it doesn't. Now when you're rocking back and forth H pattern shifter back and forth, uh, it is too thin, it can't handle the bulk of this. So you do have to directly mount this to your 8020 to get a nice positive feel. Otherwise, every time you're moving around, it's gonna feel loose to you, right? Sequential shifter, the Q1 I have mounted to the bracket, I don't like it as much as, as I do hard mount it, but I'm obviously out of space and I didn't buy any more 8020 to fit. Long term, I would buy another piece of 8020, mount it here to the side and hard mount this one as well. And that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing. But if you did wanna use these brackets for the sequential just to get you by, it does work because this one's only going into a frontward pattern. Even though you see it moving, you don't actually feel it in your hand. You don't lose any connectivity, no positive feedback in this because you're a pull in action. But if you're pushed side to side, as you can see it move around, it's horrible. Uh, and you really feel that with H pattern shifter. So I don't recommend the brackets for H pattern. I think they get you by just fine. They're fine for the sequential as well. But all in all, I wouldn't recommend you spending the 20 bucks for the brackets anyways. I would rather you spend 20 bucks on another piece of 8020 channel and a couple brackets and you'll be much sturdier that way. Uh, so that's the only other con. Doesn't necessarily have to do with this, but it is part of the package when I bought this H pattern shifter. I bought two of these brackets because my idea was to mount one here on this side of the rig, I'll get my unboxing, and this one on the other side of the rig. Uh, but the thing is, is this moved way too much, or this whole base moved way too much. It was just very undesirable. So that's it. All right, so that covers all the cons. Next up. All right, ending thoughts here, any conclusion here about this H pattern shifter and the brackets that, uh, that I bought separately with it, uh, part of the package. Brackets, like I said, would suggest getting them. Just use them in a pinch if you needed to until you got some 8020 rig. Uh, 8020 uh, profile so you could uh, mount it up to be a much sturdier solution. Now if you're just rocking just this shifter itself uh, without trying to do dual purpose you don't need the bracket anyways. You just go straight up to your 8020. You do not have to utilize both of these these holes. You could actually just use the center hole here just fine on both ends and mount it straight up to your 8020. I actually have it slid over to this far right one so I have some clearance for my sequential so that may be your situation as well. But this does not move at all mount it like that plenty plenty strong i saw some people on facebook uh wondering about this as well and i, I suggested it on the uh, sim magic uh, facebook page here just mount it up one of these uh these two here if you need room on the other side plenty sturdy way more sturdy than using a bracket but all in all the the package you get here with a sequential pattern and h pattern uh, shifter is, is a highly desirable for sim racers that is. They want to have dual purpose as much as they can. Now, most most uh, most people know that uh, jack of all trades, master of none, but uh, is, is not always great as far as being the most effective feeling uh, when it comes to, to uh, say, a sequential mode and H pattern mode shifter. And as I demonstrated here, and found that H pattern mode, this is this is just right. Uh, this is fine. Uh, nothing wrong with it. It works really good. It's a very positive feedback. The price of three eighty nine ninety nine. This is actually a really good deal considering you have both uh, both features on this. The the footprint of this is not very big at all. Uh, much smaller than Fanatic one is. So this is doesn't take up a lot of room on your rig. Very sturdy construction. So I love it. As far as that goes, this, I, I would not want to pull it off my rig unless I spent 
uh, three times the amount of money to put a, a, a H pattern shifter on here, uh, which they are out there, right? But I don't see any need to buy those when you have this Simagic H pattern shifter here. This gets the job done for me, and I'm usually pretty picky, but yes, I would like a more engaged feedback, but considering as much as I use H pattern mode, I mainly rock sequential mode. This is just fine. This gets the job done, uh, no problem. Not only does it get the job done, but it's actually fun. So being when I'm slamming through gears here and, and feeling that positive engagement in the gear, positive engagement out of the gear, and then back into another gear, uh, slamming gears, it feels, feels right. It feels really good. So uh, I do recommend this H pattern shifter uh, for the H pattern purpose. Now, if you want it just for sequential, I don't recommend this for sequential at all, I would say get the Q1 for that. But then again, this is up to you. If you have someone that dabbles in H pattern and you want the dual purpose, this is the way to go. But if you are specific in what you'd normally like to do, pick one or the other, right? So I wouldn't use this for sequential, which I don't I always use this for H pattern. Another observation that, like I mentioned earlier, is, is I would like a little a dash of red in here that match the rest of this. So it just fits the whole ensemble here that they got going on. There's really nothing else to say about this shifter that's wonderful. I like it a lot. I think you'd enjoy it if you're someone that's looking for an H pattern shifter. Works really good. Works with the Canva software all in one. Uh, if you have all these things hooked up and you want to say play on your PlayStation and got the little device for that, then yeah, there you go. You got it all right. But all right, well, that's it. Uh, hopefully this is helpful to you. Leave your comments below and uh, we'll see you on the track. I'm out.